Now I am going to discuss some oftenly asked question from chemiosmotic hypothesis in photosynthesis. Now the first question over here, during the time of photosynthetic electron transport chain, the highest number of proton in the chloroplast are found in option 1 stroma, option 2 lumen of thylakoid, option 3 intermembrane space and option 4 antenna complex. So we have to find out the answer to this question. If you recall the previous concept which I taught you before that if this is the membrane of thylakoid and we have studied that the photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 they are present on the membrane of the thylakoid this is the photosystem 2 we know that they are embedded in the membrane this is the photosystem 1 which we have studied before now this photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 they are going to lose their electron in presence of light and there is another complex which is present on the membrane of thylakoid that is cytochrome BF complex. As soon as photosystem both the photosystem get excited this one will be getting excited with the help of 680 nanometer of light and this is going to get excited at 700 nanometer of light right so both of these photosystem as we have discussed in our earlier videos that they are going to lose electron from the photosystem one as it gets excited electrons will get extruded out and will be accepted by FES that is iron sulfur cluster from this iron sulfur cluster the electron is going to move down to or it is going to be taken up by feridoxine because of its greater redox potential so there are two molecules of feridoxine another small protein which is associated with the outer side of the outer membrane of thylakoid and they are also situated near to photosystem 1 is FNR FNR which is also known as feridoxin NADP reductase you can simply call it as NADP reductase so what is going to happen that this FNR it is a multi enzyme complex and it has a FAD plus so what is present inside it one molecule of FAD plus is present and I told you FAD plus have the ability to take two electrons and two protons. These protons will be taken from the stroma. This is the stromal part outside the thylakoid. And finally, this FNR which contains FAD, it will be reducing NADP plus to NADPH. How it will happen? This NADP plus will be accepting two electrons but only one proton. So we have to remember that FAD plus accepts two electron and two protons while NADP plus accepts two electron and one proton. So there will be formation of the another proton will remain as it is like NADP H plus H plus. So what will happen initially? this electron deficit in the ps1 will be substituted by the electron which is coming out from the ps2 when ps2 is excited simultaneously the electron comes out from it and will be accepted by pheophytin all these things we have discussed in our previous video now from this pheophytin it is going to move to plastoquinone I talked about the Q cycle also. So there will be a cycle over here. Two molecules of plastoquinone is involved. There will be plastohydroquinone. 
like this and finally the electron only one electron will come over here at a time and another electron will be remaining within this q cycle so from the cytochrome bf complex the electron will further move to plastocyanin yes plastocyanin is a blue color pigment or pigment carrier because it contain copper so from plastocyanin the electron deficit in the ps1 will be filled up or it will be satisfied so in this way we can see one electron is coming from at a time one electron is moving from ps2 to ps1 and with ps2 on the inner side of the thylakoid membrane that was the fnr was present on the outer membrane of thylakoid associated to ps1 but to the inner side of the inner thylakoid membrane this is the inner thylakoid membrane and towards the inner side of the inner thylakoid membrane associated to ps2 there is another enzyme complex that is known as oec that is oxygen evolution complex we, we can also call it as water oxidase and the function of this water oxidase is to split water that is two molecule of water will be splitted in order to release four yes h plus ion four electron and there will be formation of one molecule of oxygen in this process what happen is that when one electron is transported from cytochrome bf complex to plastocyanin at that time the two protons which was present in the q cycle as plastohydroquinone it is going to be pumped because cytochrome bf complex cannot accept proton it is a one system carrier it can only carry electron it cannot carry proton so what will happen for transport of one electron from plastoquinone to cytochrome bf complex and thereby to plastocyanin there will be pumping of two protons into the lumen these two protons were accepted from the stroma by the plastoquinone why plastoquinone because it is present in plastid it will be it was present in the stroma this protons that was accepted by plastoquinone to form plastohydroquinone and we again know that plastoquinone cannot carry electron alone it needs the proton for transporting the electron to the next carrier that is over here that is cytochrome bf complex so for transport of one electron we can see plastoquinone have pumped two protons into the lumen of thylakoid so here there are four electrons so you can easily calculate that there will be pumping of eight h plus ion or protons into the lumen of the thylakoid this represents a lumen of thylakoid this is the lumen right along with that we can also say four h plus ion was present due to photolysis inside the lumen of the thylakoid so four plus eight it is coming 12 h plus ion accumulated in the lumen of the thylakoid so we can see gradually that the proton concentration in the lumen is gradually increasing why because the transport of electron from plastoquinone to cytochrome bf complex per electron two four protons or h plus ion are pumped into the lumen second point is that the photolysis of water is taking place in the lumen of thylakoid that is yielding 4 h plus ion per two molecules of water for two molecules of water 4 h plus ion is produced due to photolysis of water and the third thing is that this fnr that is 
NADP reductase or uh, feridoxin NADP reductase, it is also accepting the protons or H plus ion from the matrix in order to form NADPH and H plus. So, we can easily understand that this electrons will be accepted by the photosystem 2 and therefore, the electron gap in the photosystem 2 will be sufficed. So, our question over here during the time of photosynthetic electron transport chain the highest number of protons in the chloroplast are found in stroma? No, because from the stroma the H plus ion are gradually drained due to this process into the lumen. Second option is the lumen of thylakoid, yes it is definitely it will be the answer let us check the other two intermembrane space no there is no question of accumulation over here it would be correct in case of mitochondria but not over here antenna complex has no role over here to play that means it is a part of the photosystem it has definitely it has a role release the electron by transferring the energy by antenna mechanism but the correct answer for this question will be lumen of thylakoid. So, the correct answer for this question is option B and the reason is first one that is photolysis of water is taking place inside the lumen. Second thing is that cytochrome BF complex it is pumping two protons and the third reason is that FNR or FAD plus it is accepting two protons from the stroma or we can say it is accepting two hydrogen ions from the stroma and therefore ultimately there is formation of NADPH plus H plus. Now moving on to the next question number of photons required to produce one molecule of oxygen option 1 16 photons option 2 6 photons option 3 or C is 8 photons and option D is 18 photons so we have to find out the correct answer for this question so if we just look into the diagram which I made to explain the first question the same diagram I am using for the second question because all these questions are from the same concept. Now as we know that the electron gap in the photosystem 1 is surfaced by the electron coming from photosystem 2. We can also say this is a uphill movement, this is a downhill movement, this is an active process because here we see that both the photosystem they are activated in presence of light energy though ATP is not hydrolyzed but light energy is required for activating this two photosystem and the electron gap which have developed in the photosystem 2 is satisfied to by photolysis of water and the photolysis of water takes place in the lumen of the thylakoid as it has been shown over here. So, here the water will be photolyzed to 4 H plus 4 electron and oxygen and the electron gap will be filled up in the PS2. Now the thing is that to transport one electron this part is very important to transport one electron from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1 how many photons are required? Yes, there will be requirement of two photons. Why? Because both this photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 has to be activated in presence of 680 nanometer and 700 nanometer of light that is photons. So, how many photons are required for transport of one electron? This to active that means to transfer this electron from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1 there is requirement of activation of photosystem 2 by this photon there will be requirement of activation of photosystem 1 with the help of this particular photon of light so there is requirement of two photons so i can write two photons are required to release one electron 
two photons are required to release or to transfer one electron not uh, yes two photons are required to transfer one electron from ps2 to ps1 and here how many uh, we can see how many electrons are produced due to photolysis of water four electrons so four electrons to transfer four electron how many photons will be required 4 into 2 8 so 8 photons will be required for transfer of this 4 electrons from PS2 to PS1 because this process is going on continuously and let us come to the question now that is the number of photons required to produce one molecule of oxygen yes the answer will be 8 photons because this is also known as quantum requirement quantum requirement means number of photons number of photons which are required to release one molecule of oxygen that is called quantum requirement quantum requirement right so the answer for this question will be option C now coming to the next question that is question number three now question number three we can see to reduce one molecule of carbon dioxide in C3 cycle assimilatory power needed is we know assimilatory power is NADPH and ATP because these are the things which are produced in the light reaction and will be taking part to have the dark reaction being complete that means without these two things which are produced from the light reaction dark reaction will not take place so we have to find out that to reduce one molecule of carbon dioxide because we know that glucose contain how many carbon six carbon and to fix one carbon of the six how many ATP and NADPH will be required so again let us come back to this concept uh, that how many electrons are produced due to that is uh, photolysis of two molecules of water four electrons right and this four electrons will be transported from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1 I told you that one NADP plus requires two electron and one H plus ion to form one molecule of NADPH and H plus will be remaining as it is so one NADP plus will be accepting two electrons to form one NADPH how many electrons are over here due to photolysis of water there is four electrons so we can easily understand that for two electron one NADPH so for four electron how many NADPH will be formed so for four electron there will be formation of two NADPH so when yes two molecules of NADPH will be formed because two electrons are required to form one in convert or reduce one NADP plus to one NADPH and again two electron will be coming they will be reducing another molecule of NADP plus to NADPH so all together there is formation of two NADPH molecules so here I can write two NADP plus will be converted into 2 NADPH plus H plus another thing is that there is another complex which I told you before which is known as CF0 CF1 complex CF0 CF1 complex this particular complex is also known as ATP synthase or ATP synthetase this is the transmembrane channel 
which is present embedded into the membrane of the thylakoid and this channel serve as a proton channel it it will become active as soon as h plus ion flows through it so how many h plus ion has been accumulated over here 12 we have already done with the help of calculation before that is yes 4 h plus from the photolysis and 8 are pumped in order to transport this 4 electron from ps2 to ps1 so 4 plus 8 it is 12 and we also know that at a time through this complex 4 h plus ion are pumped so at a time through this complex 4 h plus ion are pumped as a result this complex the receptors which were hidden inside that is the head of this F CF0 CF1 complex they have a receptor the receptors were not exposed they were present inside and as soon as proton flows through this complex this CF1 becomes active as a result the receptors they are exposed outside these are the receptors for ADP and inorganic phosphate they will bind with ADP and inorganic phosphate and convert them into ATP right so now you tell me how many protons are over here by virtue of this calculation 12 so if four of them goes at a time then we can just divide it you will be getting three this three is number of ATPs that is you can write it like this three ATP will be produced so for fixation of one carbon or out of the six carbon present in glucose there is requirement of 3 ATP that means 3 ATP is required in order to fix one carbon out of the six in glucose so now let us come to the question to reduce one carbon dioxide in C3 cycle the assimilatory power needed is 3 ATP and 2 NADPH yes it is 3 ATP and 2 NADPH we can see this so the right answer will be this the other options are incorrect 2 ATP plus 3 NADPH no already we know that 3 ATP the third option that is the option C 5 ATP no it is not 5 ATP and option D is 6 ATP the correct answer for this question will be option A let us move on to the next question and the same concept based questions are there question number four which of the following is responsible for ATP formation according to chemiosmotic hypothesis yes we were discussing the chemiosmotic hypothesis you know that here we know that there is accumulation of protons in the lumen of thylakoid and I told you the reason why because plastoquinone is pumping in form of plastohydroquinone from that hydrogen ions are pumped into the lumen then we can say that photolysis is taking place inside the lumen of thylakoid therefore H plus ion concentration is increased over here and the third reason is that the FNR that is feridoxin NADP reductase which is associated with PS1 and loosely associated with the outer site of the outer thylakoid membrane it is accepting H plus ion from the stroma in order to form the NADPH and H plus so in the stromal side H plus ion concentration is gradually decreasing so the H plus 
ion concentration is gradually increasing inside the lumen as a result of which there is development of an entropy thermodynamic entropy which tends to make the H plus ion move across the membrane through CF0 F1 complex so this proton gradient which is generated across the membrane activates this complex as a result of which ADP and inorganic phosphate combines to form ATP 3 ADP and 3 phosphate they will combine to form 3 ATP molecules for fixation of one carbon of the glucose so here let us check the options proton gradient photons with inactive plastoquinone no if the plastoquinone becomes inactive then there is no question of this hydrogen pump there is no question of pumping of hydrogen into the lumen activated ps2 only both ps2 and ps1 is required for this non-cyclic photophosphorylation and allowing the h plus gradient activated ps1 only ps2 is also required otherwise this process cannot take place so the correct answer for this question will be proton gradient so the correct answer will be ans option number a now we move on to the next question that is the first electron acceptor of ps1 and ps2 yes it is a very direct question we can see from the diagram that the first electron acceptor of ps2 is pheophytine i told you you remember that initially the redox potential of ps2 and ps1 is lesser than that of their immediate electron carrier but as they are activated by light energy the redox potential decrease the ionization potential increase as a result the electrons are released from this ps2 from the photocenter of the ps2 and ps1 from the ps2 the first electron acceptor first electron acceptor is pheophytine and from ps1 the first electron acceptor is iron sulfur cluster so let us check out this answer over here the first option i can see over here is that fes and pheophytine but for question is for ps1 and ps2 is yes, for ps1 it is fes and for ps2 it is pheophytine it is correct answer let's let us see the other options fd that is from the ps1 it is not the first acceptor is fes iron sulfur cluster then from there it is going to move into feridoxin so this is not correct the third option plastoquinone from ps1 it is not going to move into plastoquinone so option c is incorrect option d flavoprotein and plastocyanin is also incorrect so the correct answer again it is option a that is iron sulfur cluster for ps1 and pheophytine for ps2 so the correct answer for this question is option a now we move on to the sixth question the next question that is how many light quanta or photons are required for four molecules of nadp plus the options are 16 quanta of light 8 quanta of light 4 quanta of light and 12 quanta of light we know that two nadp h formation requires eight photons so one nadph formation will be requiring how many photons eight by two so here in the sum they are asking that four molecules of nadph so for formation of four nadph there will be requirement of that is 
16 photons. So for 2 NADPH formation there is requirement of 8 photons. We have already studied this from here that 1 NADPH formation requires 2 electrons and for this 2 electrons how many photons are required that is for 4 electron to be transported we require 8 for 2 electron to be transported we require 4 photons so 2 NADPH formation requires 8 photons and 1 NADPH formation will be requiring 4 photons in the question it is asked that 4 NADPH formation will require 8 by 2 into 4 that is 16 photons so the correct answer over here is again option a that is 16 quanta of light or 16 photons the correct answer for this question will be option a i hope that this video will be helpful for all of you i will be making more such videos but for that you please tell me your comment how you like this or whether the concepts are getting that means the concepts the way it has been displayed it is clear to you or how your likings are so please like if you like this video just click on the like button share and subscribe so stay tuned